Welcome to beautiful downtown LJ. What a gorgeous day to be outside. What a gorgeous day to be an outdoorsman. What a gorgeous day to take a hike. What a beautiful day to get lost. And we're going to talk <laughs> about that today. So it is just going to be a fun day. I have tons and tons of birthdays. I want to take care of the birthdays. And number one, I want to say thank you. I love my new little goodie with the cotton because I love something about growing cotton. There's something I don't like picking cotton, but I like growing cotton. Love my little goodie. It says faith on it. We all have to have faith. If we don't have faith, we are not going to get through this old nasty, nasty world. So um, love it, love it, love it. Came from Jasper Mountain Crafts and Consignment and just a beautiful piece. And I also have some beautiful butterflies behind me you'll get to see in a few minutes. But I have a lot of birthdays and I want to take care of those first because we're going to have a very busy program. A busy program because we are going to teach you the ins, the outs, and the do not evers of of camping, being out in the wilderness, and coming out of their lives. So we're going to share that with you in just a little bit. But I have some special birthdays. First, Alicia Bridgman's birthday will be tomorrow. Not today, but tomorrow, but I won't be here tomorrow. And to Al Roth, my buddy, who we were on the Habitat board for years together, love you to death. And to June Bagwell, happy, happy day to you. To Scott Perry, to Janine Welch, to Joe Call, to Charlotte Henry, to Stella Perry, to Tammy Bigham, to Lonnie Oliver, to Shane Duggan, to Tanya Tinsley, to Jamie Dudney, and to my sweet Marcel Ledbetter, who happens to make <laughs> the best pound cake you ever put in your mouth. And the pound cake is, is certainly not going to be Maybe not her best thing. Her biscuits might be her best thing, but she's, they're going to be coming out with a cookbook, and you've got to sign up for this. I'll give you all the information on my Facebook page later. Her daughter is doing a cookbook of her fantastic recipes and her techniques for cooking, so, so that's going to be fun. And also, a very happy heavenly birthday to Don Page, one of the dear folks in Jasper who sadly left us about a year ago. And when we think about it, he's not here anymore, but he is celebrating his heavenly birthday. So happy birthday. And today I want to ask you to also say a prayer for Donna Tippin. She went into surgery this morning, so please say a prayer for her. You know, we know that prayers are answered and you have the ability to do that. And that's one of the great things we can do here at ETC. We can share prayer requests. And now, what if the media told us, <coughs> one day we couldn't do that. I want to have a kick and cuss and fit. <laughs> and it'd be a bad day. So we are lucky enough to do that. If you have prayer requests, you know you can send them to me on Facebook. You can message me. You can text me. You can get to me any way you want to. A lot of you stop me in Walmart and give me your prayer request, which is absolutely fine. Now today we are going to talk about survival. Um, you know, I've survived some things that I... <laughs> I was in doubt myself because I went through a bunch of junk in my life. And when you look back at your life and you're thinking, oh, that was such a mess and that was such a success, that was such a disaster, that was such, a, you know, it, it goes up and down, up and down. But I found this in my desk this morning. And I don't remember who gave me this. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are killing me. The survivalist walked in and my allergies went nuts. So, no, my allergies were really bad before he got here. So... But this was in my desk, and I don't remember who gave it to me, but I love it. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that is so for everybody. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're up against. I have, I have so many friends who lost either their husband or their fiance or their, their loved ones and they are, I can't go on, I can't go on. We have no choice but to go on because when the Lord says it's time to go home, we're going home. There's nothing we can do to change that and so we have to go on and, and to those of you who just, um, I, I was reading a, a message from one of my friends yesterday. She lost her only child about three months ago and she said, I honestly don't want to live and I just thought, you've got to. You have to. But she said, I can't go on without Michael. And it just broke my heart because I thought, you know, when I lost a child, I was I was fortunate that I had two more to deal with and to, to bless me and to keep me going. But when she said, and I thought about that, when you lose your only child, how do you face the tomorrows? But you have to face the tomorrows. And and you will face those tomorrows. So would you please say a prayer for her? Because when I, when I was reading it, I thought that scares me. It really scares me because she was really, really down. And no matter what you're facing, there is a better day ahead, I promise you. Now, because today is Throwback Thursday, we're going to throw it back to where my guest had hair. He was young. He was a Boy Scout. 
who became an Eagle Scout will always be an Eagle Scout. We're going to share a lot of cool stuff with you. We're also going to throw it back to one of the very first Heart of the Homes where we made ammonia cookies. Now when my friend, this is an old, old West Virginia recipe. When my friend Pam Dorsey said, I'm going to share one of my great-great-grandmother's recipes with you, it's ammonia cookies, and I thought, oh, because I cleaned the bathroom with Parsons ammonia, and I'm thinking that's what we're going to be using for cookies. No, that's not it. But I want you to watch today because this is a, it's a little bit of a complex cookie, but it had a great flavor, and I don't know who dreamed this up, but it was way, way, way back when. And it's one of those things, it was a survival thing for the West, West Virginia coal miners who were very poor, who had very little to do with, but they made these amazing cookies. And now, to find the ingredients for it, you have to go, I think Jasper Drugstore used to have the ingredients, so <coughs> my allergies are going to get me today, y'all. <coughs> Goodness. But anyway, this ammonia cookie is good. It's really good, and it surprised me because when Tuesday said, oh, we'll do Nana's ammonia cookies and I went Ugh, really okay but it's good it's good and we're going to share that recipe with you we are going to share a lot of what it takes to survive out in the wilderness and um, you know sadly there have been people who went into the woods and did not come out alive and it happens often and uh, we were talking about one of my friends Mike Rizuko who makes these amazing knives and I had I had Peter on the show one day with all these knives and I would say well what's this one for well what's this one for and he would say well this one's survival and you never think about if you go into the woods you truly do need something for survival. If you come up on a big bear now I don't think you could knife a bear I don't think that's gonna work but you do need survival things and we're going to talk about that today. We're also going to, um, you know, tomorrow is my day off. I'm so excited about it. Today is real estate showing day. I'm still looking for a home with 10 to 12, 15 acres under $400,000. If you have anything like that listed, I've been looking everywhere and today I'm going to go preview one and then show it this afternoon. Real estate is really, really busy. And I made this joke about ball ground, but it's kind of a serious thing about ball ground. If you want to li live in ball ground, you get the Pickens Progress on Wednesday afternoon when it first comes out. You read the obits. You see if anybody in ball ground died, then you stand at their driveway and wait on the kids to come home from the funeral. You can't find a house in ball ground. We are growing. We are busting at the seams. Gilmer County is growing. Pickens County is growing. We are all growing. And with that come city slickers who decide they want to go hunting and they want to go hiking and they want to go camping and today Tom is going to teach them just what they need to come out of the woods alive so we're going to spend some time doing that it's going to be a fun day it's going to be interesting because I don't like to hunt camp or fish anymore I used to but I hope he can get me encouraged to do it again maybe we'll see we'll see Fishing is one of those things I don't even like. You know, we haven't even talked about that. When you're out in the woods doing what he does, do you catch fish and do you feed yourself fish? I don't know. We'll see about that when we come back in just a few minutes. Please don't forget our sponsors. If you do not advertise with us, you should. We have the best, best money value anywhere in advertising. You can pick up the phone and call me at 404-375-0590. I can't wait for you to see our Dairy Queen commercial. We have two of the cutest kids in these mountains on that commercial doing an ice cream and they're just, one of them's got it in her face and she's eating it, the other one's got a chocolate cone and it's so cool. I can't wait for you to see it. And yesterday, I had the perfect Sherry Martin Blizzard. It was dead on right and uh, my little buddy Brock made it and it was so good. So you're going to have to check out our local Dairy Queen. We're going to leave you now for just a couple of minutes. We'll be back shortly. You have never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days Uh oh Flowers in the garden grow, sun will shine on us below All our days, growing up and all together Couldn't even dream a better, couldn't even dream a better way You are everything I need Happy ever after will be Couldn't even dream a better, once upon a life together couldn't even dream a better way A better way A better way Fountain 
Martin Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids and trust. <laughs> Call Alpha! The best agents in the business, call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center in Canton specializes in low-level pain management. We provide a holistic approach to treatment, managing knee, back, and joint pain along with migraines, allergies, and medical weight loss through holistic and alternative approaches rather than pharmaceutical treatments. By offering multiple specialties under one roof, including chiropractic care and neuropathy injection treatment, we create the continuity of care that assures positive patient outcomes. So take the first step to a life free of pain. Give us a call or go online today to georgiamtc.com. We are back, and uh, Tom, tell me a little bit. We're, we're saying we're doing a, sh a throwback show. You are uh, now over 60, we'll just say that. Correct. And the trip that we're going to take people back to happened in the 60s. Correct. Tell me a little bit about how you became a lover of surviving in the wilderness. Okay, it was in the fall of 1965 or 1966. My Boy Scout troop from Atlanta came to North Georgia working. Troop number. 18, okay. Atlanta Area Council, troop number 18, salute to all yeah. you guys, yeah. and we came up for an afternoon hike working on our hiking merit badge, and it was to be a two and a half, three mile easy hike, uh, packed a sack lunch, and probably had our Boy Scout knives in our pockets, and that was about it. Do you remember how you were dressed that day? Uh, it was a fall day, so we, you know, we were in long pants and our hiking boots and a jacket. Uh -huh. um, but Probably we, not a thick parka. No, no, it was a beautiful afternoon <coughs> when we started late morning. And uh, late in the afternoon, a uh, mountain weather phenomenon occurred. We had a fog bank come in on us, so dense that you couldn't see the hiker in front of you. Uh, that was our first cause for concern. And then soon after, the temperature dropped dramatically, uh -huh. and it began to snow. Temperature dropped further, wind picked up. Long story short, um, we were lost uh -huh. and we were not prepared. Uh -huh. And uh, our scoutmaster. Um, A total of 20 of you? About 20 boys. There was 11 in what we called the fast group, and there was eight or nine in the slower hiking group, and uh -huh. our scoutmaster. And he became ill. Um, one of diabetic? Our first, was he a diabetic? I, we th I think my memory served me he was diabetic, and we were concerned that he might be having a heart attack. Wow. And, wow, so uh, you got a bunch of little boys, and y'all were little boys. Right. And then a sick scoutmaster. Right. Okay, panic. In a snowstorm. Oh, yeah. Right. It's time to panic. Absolutely. And one of our first mistakes was we divided into two groups. Uh -huh. Looking back on it, you stay together. Uh, if you don't know where you are, uh -huh. you stay put, uh -huh. you build a fire, you build shelter, <coughs> and you weather the storm. We split into two groups. I was in the fast hiking group, 11 of us, hiked on through the storm. Um, and luckily, it was opening of deer season that weekend, and we found a deer hunter's jeep 
uh, late that night, probably 10, 11 o'clock that night, we happened upon the Jeep and we broke into the Jeep and uh -huh. all 11 boys piled into that Jeep. And about four or five that morning, uh, we saw some headlights coming through the woods. And was that not it was a, a sign oh, from God that it you was were indeed. being rescued? We, yeah. We were all in that Jeep, cuddled up, trying to stay warm and just fantasizing about what the headlines were going to read in Atlanta the yeah. next morning. Did children ever panic and cry? I mean, I... We I, didn't. We stayed, wow. we stayed calm and that's, yeah. uh, that was to our credit because yeah. when, you, when you lose control, you start making really poor decisions. Mm -hmm, We'd mm -hmm. already made enough bad decisions for one day. Right. And uh, the uh, park ranger loaded us up in his truck and took us down to Helen. And back in 65, 66, Helen was still a sleepy little mountain town. And uh, the only place they had to house 11 cold, scared little boys was in the Helen City Jail. Wow. So at the ripe old age and of 12, I was a jailbird. <laughs> Wasn't it? Jail never looked so good. Uh, now let me ask you something. When he took the 11 of y'all out, how long was it before they found the others? After daybreak, they went back wow. and found the rest of the group. And were they in good they condition? They were in good shape. They okay. had built a fire. They had, they had done more right than we had, actually. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. And uh, sitting in that jail is where this passion for the wilderness and outdoor survival uh -huh. all began with me. And it's, it's Can we a, tell folks you're a city slicker? You can. You he, certainly can. He really can. is. He doesn't Born sound like it. Born and raised in the big city of Atlanta. Yeah, but you were one of the smart ones. You fled. <laughs> it did. I got <laughs> out of there as quick as I could. That's right. <laughs> now, you landed in Pickens County. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about um, your survival skills growing? Grew as you as you aged and you learned and you made some mistakes and you did this and that trial errors. Did Pickens County have something to do with it? Is there a certain place there you like to visit? Pickens Is there... County gave me a venue for this school. Mm -hmm. um, we have a eight acre slice of heaven that looks at about five thousand acres of beautiful mountains. Mm -hmm. Sharp Mountain. Sharp Mountain. Mm -hmm. We're nestled in right behind Sharp Mountain. And just That's love awful it. view, isn't it? It's just a terrible view. <laughs> yeah. That's a piece of how much land do you own? So we own, we own eight acres, but we own the view of 5,000. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Now, you brought some goodies. And I said, I've had 11 years, I've had a lot of guests, probably 5,000 guests. I don't think anybody's ever piled in <laughs> as much junk as you've brought. Can we talk a little bit about the absolute have-tos when sure. you go into the woods and the things that men and boys the difference is the price of their toys right are there oh. some things here that are unnecessary or is it all necessary a lot of what you see here today that we'll share with you are teaching aids uh -huh. um, what we consider the five essentials of wilderness survival and the number one tool resource is a knife uh -huh. and people think you know you need to have a great big Jim Bowie style knife that's not necessary at all uh, the ideal knife this is a good example has about a uh, four and a half to five inch blade. It has what we call a full tang where the metal of the knife runs from the tip of the knife all the way through the handle. Uh -huh. We like for it to have somewhat of a curved blade on it and a 90 degree face on the spine of the blade. What would you use that knife for? Well, we'd use it for carving, uh, processing firewood, processing uh, cordage. Um, we would use a baton and actually could use this knife in conjunction with a baton, set this on top of the wood and pound the knife through uh -huh. a piece of firewood and okay. it, it will cut, uh, it will serve as an axe. You know what I don't see that here? Way. What's uh, that? I don't see a cigarette lighter or a match. <laughs> cigarette lighter okay. right here. Bic lighter. <laughs> Okay. Very important. Very important. Each morning when I get dressed, my big lighter goes in my pocket, my little right. open L folding knife goes in, and my ferrocerium rod. So there are so three tiny. Two ways of starting a fire uh -huh. and an ancillary knife. It's, it's important to have redundancy in all these five items. And again, back to the five items. The number one is a cutting tool. Uh -huh. Then it goes combustion device. So that could be a big lighter uh -huh. or a ferrocerium rod. Uh -huh. Then cordage. This is paracord and this is tarred bank line. And, and both of those are really, really sturdy, aren't they? These yeah. are these are 185-pound uh, uh, test and 550-pound test. Wow. So both very useful. Uh -huh. um, another key item is a container. Um, all of these items are items that would be difficult to duplicate in the wild right. and are all very necessary. 
Uh, for processing water, you're going to need to boil the water if you don't have chemical uh, agents to sanitize it with. So are you saying if I went out into the wild and I wanted to drink from the stream, I shouldn't? You should not. You wow. Should not. Yeah. See, I always thought of going out in the wild and just putting your hands in the water and loving that water. Yep, are you saying not to do that? In today's world, oh that could uh, that could uh, have how devastating people, results. Well, There's, how many city slickers have come up here over the weekend and have done exactly what I would have done? And then they most likely stop at the CVS on the <laughs> way home, get them virus. some Pepto Bismol and Imodium, and call it a day. Oh. Wow. There's, uh, I never thought of that. There's all sorts of organisms in the water. If you're going to drink water, you want it to be bubbling up out of the ground and know its origin, know that it has not had a deer or an uh -huh, animal of some uh -huh. sort die in it upstream. Yep. Um, I never thought about that. Yeah. Beaver ponds are notorious for what we call beaver fever. Um, the gerardia comes from the fecal matter from beavers. So it's best. I will never look at a creek again the same. Never. <laughs> <It's>, it is <laughs> best. You it for me. <laughs> the only surefire way to totally disinfect water is to boil it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So here's your. Here's stove. our container. Here's right. my stove. Okay. And uh, of how long you, does it take to bring it to a boil? We'll bring you it to bring a boil? it to a rolling boil, and then you're good. You're good to consume okay. it then. And okay. if it's if it's murky water, you want to pre-filter it through a bandana or something to get the, the large debris out of it uh -huh. and then boil it, bring it to a rolling boil and then you can rest assured that it's safe to do. Where's lunch, Tom? <laughs> It's out wandering around I don't in the woods. See. Oh, <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you that. Are you a fisherman? I am indeed. Okay. Now, if we caught a fish mm -hmm. in a creek and we cleaned it and we cooked it, where's the tartar sauce? <laughs> I don't see any of well, the things. Well, you know, I need. it's interesting you say that, Sherry, because I always you got to have some of life's pleasures when you're okay. in the wilderness. Okay. I always carry Catch my little him. bottle of sriracha sauce. Oh, Always. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, literally, you have all this stuff, but you said that you really do go into the woods with... With just this pack. Okay. And Show every, me... Everything that you would need okay. can go in this pack. What's that little orange and black doodaddy? That's a spot device, and that's, a, that's kind of a new technology device that connects via satellite okay. and your loved ones back home can follow you on the internet where you oh, are cool. and it can uh, send a text message mm -hmm. to, or an email message mm -hmm. to them letting you know that you safely arrived at that designated point for that particular day. In the event of an emergency, someone in your party gets injured or sick, you can uh, solicit rescue help. Is this Search like and rescue a can be cell summoned. phone ping? It will ping wherever you are? It will ping where you are and it is satellite, not cell tower okay. driven. So does it mean it works worldwide? Worldwide. How cool is that? Yeah, and it's, it's a subscription. It's, I think, $150 per year to subscribe to the service. Money Even well spent. Even for a realtor, seriously. Sure. Because if you're previewing, looking at a large tract of land, sure. and you get hurt or sure. something, that, that's a great idea. Absolutely. Now, how do people find these? Well, they're available at, uh, like, REI, Cabela's, Bass Pro, uh, Amazon, of course, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, it's a great device to have. If if you have that, then you're really truly never you're lost. You're cool. You're cool. Right. Yeah. Now, when you started doing the school, I mean, you you obviously love all this stuff, but you found a need to do a school. Why? Well, uh, so many people, like you said earlier, uh, venture into the outdoors. They uh, leave Atlanta and they think they can they find They do, their way whether it be on a mountain bike or in a <laughs> kayak or canoe or hang gliding or what have you. Uh -huh. uh, and you, say you're on a mountain bike and you decide you want to make that last run down uh, the Widowmaker Hill uh -huh. and everybody else is left and you make that last run and wow. something goes wrong and yes. you fall and break the collarbone and yep. you're stranded overnight. Uh -huh. What do you do? Yeah. And what we teach in the school and, and back to your point earlier, your, your, uh, your point about maintaining a, a good attitude. Um, that's the number one wilderness Survival. essential. And you think about it, when you, if you call 911, the first thing they'll tell you, remain calm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in order to remain calm, you have to have confidence. Mm -hmm. And where do you get confidence? You get confidence from knowledge. And mm -hmm. that's what we provide at the mm -hmm. SOS School is knowledge and hands-on experience 
in how to deal with the unexpected in the wilderness. Well, the day when you do, I'm going to call your school a daycation. You're going to bring these folks out here and you're going to give them a daycation in the woods. Okay, right on this daycation, will they actually go out into the woods or will you prepare them for it? We'll prepare them for it and we'll go out into the woods on our little eight acres. So okay. they're not going to be a lot of, of, of wood time, but we call it dirt time. And we, we simulate a wilderness experience and they have hands-on all day. It's not a matter of me telling them how to do something. I will tell them, show them, and then they will do it uh -huh. under my supervision. Uh -huh. So if, if, you, if you think about uh, a football team, they may watch game films. I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh -huh. They may read the playbook. I read a lot of books on uh -huh. survival. Uh -huh. But then they go to the field and they practice. Have to do it. And they yeah. practice under the coach's supervision. They yeah. have that hands-on experience, and that's what we offer. Yeah. Now, tell me about your blanket, because you love your blanket. I love wool you know blankets. How, you know how kids get their blankie? Tom's got his blankie. Right-o, right-o. <laughs> um, one of the, the top five items to carry is cover. Mm -hmm. And we designate these as the five C's, and one of those C's is cover. And your first form of protection or shelter or cover is the clothes on your back mm -hmm. and anything that you might use to wrap up in or sleep in if you're spending the night. Mm -hmm. um, I am very partial to wool in cold weather. Um, wool is uh, a it great... It breathes. It breathes. It's yeah. a natural fiber. Synthetics are another good option. They dry quickly. Uh -huh. Wool will maintain 80% of its insulated value even when soaking wet. Wow. The nice thing about wool versus the synthetics, I have an old Patagonia pullover that I dearly love. I can't part with it, but it probably has 50 holes burned in it. We're sitting around campfires wow. through the years. Sparks have hit it and burned holes. Wool, that won't happen with. Uh -huh. So I am, I'm partial to wool. Synthetics would be my next favorite. You want items that will dry rapidly, that will keep you warm, insulate you uh, in cold weather, and cool you in hot weather. What about a comfortable weight to carry? Because you don't want to have oh my aching back when you get through with this. Right. What is a comfortable weight? Well, you want you want to be in good physical condition, and that's going to vary from person to person. It's also going to vary depending on the terrain. If you're hiking in the mountains, you're going to have to have good cardiovascular and uh -huh. respiratory fitness. Uh, if you're taking a walk down a beach, that's a totally different story. Uh -huh. But up here in these mountains, uh, you you have a load on your back. Uh -huh. uh, this pack that I carry frequently is probably 10, 12 pounds. My backpacking pack today would be about 30, 35 pounds. Wow. Back in the day when I was in Boy Scouts, it wasn't unusual for us to be carrying 60 pound packs as little boys. Packs Gosh. weighed dang near as much as we did. Mm -hmm. So uh, technology has lightened the load quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, and knowledge, uh, Morris Kahansky, one of the premier authorities on butchcraft and wilderness survival says the more you know the less you have to carry because you can fabricate a lot of what you need once you get to your destination yeah. rather than carrying it in with you. Now one of the things we haven't talked about and I'm looking at you said rope you know mm -hmm. this obviously you would buy somewhere but right. if you have used all this or something happened to it if you fell in a creek and your backpack came off your back and fluttered down the river what about this tell me right. about this. In the wilderness uh, what we try to stress to our students is, is that they need to look at uh, the wilderness with a little different viewpoint. Um, to have a basic understanding of the plant life, the flora and the fauna. And as an example, this is a yucca leaf off of a yucca plant. They don't really grow wild that much around here, but uh -huh. in the desert southwest and in some parts of Florida, they grow prolifically. And they have inside of the yucca leaf, you can see the fibers. It feels called, like nylon, doesn't it? It's, it's almost as strong yeah, as nylon. Yeah, it feels like nylon. They're called bast fibers. And there's a number of uh, plants in the wild that have similar fibers. Uh -huh. This bundle here is called stinging nettle. And if anybody out in your viewing audience has ever happened upon these wearing shorts, they know why it's called stinging nettle. Mm, right, but this yeah. is the bark after it's been processed from the plant. It's a weed-like plant, and it has the same type of fibers, the bast fibers that the yucca does, or the intercambium layer of poplar bark does. And these can all be twisted into cordage. Uh -huh. or string or rope, if you uh -huh. will. Uh -huh. So having an understanding of what the plant life 
offers up to us in a survival situation can make a big difference in uh, in the success or failure of your You got any natural situation. toilet paper here? Well, you know, it's interesting. There's a plant called mullein. It's spelled M-U-L-L-E-I-N. Some pronounce it mullein, some pronounce it moline. I think the correct pronunciation is moline. And it is indeed often referred to as cowboy toilet paper. Okay. And it is a soft, fluffy, durable, leafy plant that in its second year of growth will shoot up about a six foot stalk with beautiful yellow flowers on it. And it is a fantastic resource. Um, now, but, is it well? Is it recognizable? Because what if you reached for something that was really dangerous, allergy-wise? Right. Yeah. Right. And you ended up in trouble. Leaves the three, leave it be. Uh -huh. Vines with little creepy crawly legs on them, leave them be. Uh -huh. Grape vines don't have those creepy crawly legs. Kudzu, as a general rule, doesn't have those. Uh -huh. um, you want to leave the three, leave it be. <coughs> Kudzu is a leave of three, and I think all of us in the South recognize yes, kudzu. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, you you, and that's one of the things we want to stress is, a lot of people when they think of the plants, they think of what's edible and what's not edible. Mm -hmm. In the wilderness survival essentials, food is very low on the priority list. There's a thing called the rule of threes. You can live for three uh, minutes without oxygen. Mm -hmm. You can live for three hours without shelter from the elements, mm -hmm. whether it be clothing on your back or a tent type shelter. And basically from the heat or the cold. Right. Because right. you could dehydrate or you could freeze. Sure. The, so. number one, the number one cause of death in the wilderness year in and year out is hypothermia. Yeah. And the shelter is your line of defense against that. Fire obviously is a line of defense against that. But you have three minutes without oxygen, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and believe it or not, three weeks without food. Wow. So the food priority is way down on the list. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. another reason that it's way down on the list is there are so many plants that have look-alikes. One plant is edible, the other plant poisonous. is deadly poisonous. Yes, yeah. And it takes a lot of energy and you burn a lot of calories out foraging for food. And in the dead of winter, a lot of those resources are just gone. Right. Um, if you happen to be by a stream where you can fish or you uh, happen to be, have a weapon with you that you could kill game with or you know how to do traps, which we teach in the school, uh -huh. then you might catch a dove or something of that nature, a squirrel, mouse. Um, you get hungry <laughs> You get hungry enough, you'll eat most anything. No, no. But food is a real <clears throat> low priority. Okay. Basically, it is truly getting out of there. Yes. Now, I want to ask you this, because is all of this necessary with today's world of cell phones? And, you know, are, are there, there are places my cell phone doesn't work. Absolutely. I've been in a lot of places. My right. cell phone doesn't work. Right. So are we going to get to a point that you're not going to need all this? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, so many places... Uh, you're not going to have cellular coverage, and even if you do have cellular coverage, it might take a search and rescue party some time to oh, yeah. get to you. Yeah, absolutely. Chances are, if, if you found yourself in a pickle, it's a different, diff, difficult uh, terrain, or the weather may be such that they just won't send a search and rescue party out for you. you. The one thing you haven't mentioned, and I'm surprised because <clears throat> I'm terrified of, and have walked over 13 rattle rattlesnakes sure. in these mountains. Sure. How do you, do you teach survival if you have a snake bite? We do, and in fact, one of the gentlemen that is a great resource for me is a retired surgeon in Thomasville that was uh, considered the number one venomous snake expert in the world. Uh -huh. And in fact, when you would call 1-800-SNAKE-BITE, he was the one who answered the phone and took your call. Wow. And I've turned to him on numerous occasions and always get the same answer. How do you treat a snake bite? With your car keys. Wow. Get you get to in your hell. car and yeah. you head to a doctor. Yeah. You do not, as, the, as we were taught in the old days, you do not cut the fang marks. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You do not suck the venom in the blood out. Uh -huh. You risk severing a vital blood vessel and uh -huh. bleeding to death. Right. Um, chances are, if you get to an emergency room quickly enough, remain calm, use your car keys, get uh -huh. to the emergency room. If you have the ability to put a compress on the uh, the bite, do so. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh -huh. Don't put a tourniquet uh -huh. because you can have 
exacerbate well, the problem and, doing and that. And see, there again, I would yeah. think you put a tourniquet and protect it from moving. So. No, no, <laughs> There you no, go. Yeah, yeah. But I snake, snakes are them. certainly a consideration <laughs> once the weather warms up. Yes, and there, yeah. there's no shortage of them. Yeah. But there's also an awful lot of good snakes. And uh, I've, I've talked to people on our road, the good snakes from the bad snakes, and they know to call me when they have a snake uh -huh, problem. And uh -huh. I go down there and, and uh, relocate the, the little serpent for them. We had eight last year, and we uh, most were, were dangerous, bad, copperheads. And then we had a five-foot black snake that mm -hmm. just wanted to hang tight. Right. He just wanted to hang around. He's a good one to have and, around, and too. And we have, knock on wood, never seen a mouse. Never seen a mouse right anywhere, well, you so know, I'm and, thinking and he's doing his job. The old timers up in these hills used to always keep a big black rat snake in their corn crib. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, anybody that'd go out there and mess with the old timers uh, black rat snake in the corn get crib in uh, got in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. In trouble. Now, when you decided you wanted to teach this, mm -hmm. how, how did you market? How do you tell people? How do you, Well, you we know? have we have a website. Uh, it's www.survival SurviveOutdoorsSchool.com. That's uh -huh. Survive Outdoors Plural uh -huh. School.com. Uh, people can go on there and get an idea of what the course entails. Uh, they can see the calendar of classes. They can contact us via the website, or they're welcome to call me. Uh, my phone number is 404-281-3551, and I'd be happy to take calls and answer any questions anybody has. And one thing about what you're doing, you're not teaching it to young kids because there's a, you know, I'm looking at these knives, I'd, I'd, I'd probably get cut with them, but you want to be cautious. So right. what age are you targeting? We, we will accommodate uh, kids with the accompaniment of their parent or legal guardian, uh, minimum age of 11. Uh -huh. um, anybody under 18 will have to have a parent or legal guardian accompany them to the class. Uh -huh. 18 and older, they can come on their own. Uh -huh. uh, our target audience is really the 18 and older, uh, the group of people. Um, but you know, having been a Boy Scout, I've got a lot of interest from the Boy Scouts. You're not Scouts. just a Boy Scout. You were an Eagle Scout. I was an Eagle Scout. Eagle Absolutely. Scout. That's Proud one of those. Of yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, out of the guys, can you remember the words when your parents got to you after that night that was so tough on everybody? Uh, you know, my dad remained calm through it all, but my mother was kind of borderline hysterical. I can she, imagine. She knew that I was kind of a woodsy kind of boy, but just the not knowing yeah. Uh, yeah. if we were dead or alive, if we were injured, sure. yeah. uh, she was so relieved. And uh, I think the first words out of her mouth were, thank God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it had to be such a scary, scary time. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a break off Facebook, and we're gonna do the ETC. Um, you're gonna get to see a. This is a old, old. Today is Throwback Thursday. This is a very old recipe, and it is called ammonia cookies. <laughs> and Miss Tuesday Hammond Tree came to my house, came to our farm. It was an 1835 farm, and made these cookies. Now I thought it was just the craziest ingredients I'd ever seen. They were really good, and I was like. Hmm, who thought of this? Generations ago, and the generations before us knew so much more about getting by on less, surviving with little, and coming through times that today's world, these little whiny crybaby yucks out there could never make it in survival, could they? There was no possible way. They might way. struggle a bit. <laughs> they might struggle. But we're going to share this great recipe, and this is an old West Virginia recipe. So get your paper and pencil out, and for you who have ETC, you're going to get to see this. And we're going to do our commercial break, and then we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Tuesday is going to show us how to make ammonia cookies, and then we're going to all enjoy some. And I promise you, this will be a recipe you'll want to try. <laughs> all your ingredients, you need a bag of flour, bag of sugar, because you're going to use four cups of sugar. You need a whole stick of Crisco. You can use lard back whenever they first made them, that's what you use, not the Crisco, but it's just a whole lot easier to use the Crisco. You uh, need measuring spoons, measuring cup, milk, and four eggs, and you will need one pint of milk, which equals two cups. You will need lemon oil. You can use lemon extract, but it's not near as good as lemon oil. This you can purchase at Williams and Sonoma, or you can get online and get, get it. Then you get the actual baker's ammonia. This you get online. You can't just get it in the grocery store. So you have to get this online, and the first thing you want to do is dissolve it in your milk. 
And so you have three full round tablespoons of your ammonia. Make sure you level it off even. Put it in to your mixing cup. Go ahead and pour your milk in. And then you just dip in, level it off three times. Sometimes it's easier to do 12 cups of flour instead of pouring the entire bag of flour in there. Put 12 cups in, that way because it's easier to add to flour than it is to try to take it out. So you put all your flour in the bowl, make a well just like you're going to make biscuits. Put in your whole stick of Crisco, four cups of sugar, and then take your hands and just go until you make dough. Then you want to beat your four eggs in another measuring, wherever you want to beat the four eggs, okay? And then you beat those, pour them in, and then you also put in your milk that has your ammonia dissolved in it. And then go ahead and get your dough really worked together and mixed in and then put your lemon oil in. So that way it goes straight into the dough instead of just releasing into the flour and everything. Then you will spread it out. You can use a um, pastry cloth or just use it on a countertop. And you put out, you'll have a big mound of dough so break it apart into pieces which makes it easier to work with. Mm -hmm. Roll it out, take a real sharp knife, just go across making them about that wide and then you want to make them about that long or if you want them in little squares to make about more of them. Three to five fine. inches, mm -hmm. about a three to five inch square. And so you just cut them across, then cut them back down just making a checkerboard, lay them on a baking sheet and put them in the oven. Your oven's going to vary. We have it at 375 you can put it up to 400 depending on your your oven how mm -hmm. fast it cooks or whatnot when they start to get golden brown pull them out set them on a wire rack and they will store in an airtight container and remember this recipe and many others that we will be sharing with you at heart of the home are available in our habitat humanity cookbook available at many stores in Jasper including Mountain View Hair Designs, Garner Ace Hardware, Appalachian Memories, all our local banks and um, every week we will be sharing a recipe with you so we want you to tune in, we want you to enjoy and we want you to use our recipes. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. How would you like to win dinner at the Woodbridge Inn? With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. Proverbs 4.26 states, Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Too often investors are looking for instant gratification or some secret formula for success. The prudent, however, have pondered the path of their money, invested with a vision, and based upon a plan that drives the selection of their investments. We believe the prudent approach is to have a strategy and patiently work towards your goals. Give us the opportunity to compete for your business, because at Keiko Wealth Management, the wisdom is in the planning. I'm Lauren Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up with number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from University of Georgia. Oh. Hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Subway. Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and Ellijay. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. 
At Blue Ridge Dermatology, we believe your skin is vital to your health. That's why each of our providers gives personalized treatment recommendations. Let Dr. Mills do a thorough exam. He specializes in all skin conditions. Jamie Savageau is our nurse practitioner who specializes in skin disease. And our physician's assistant, Patrick Martin, is a certified injector for facial rejuvenation. Our certified laser technician, Donna Atosco, performs laser procedures with the latest gold standard equipment. Susan Newton is our medical esthetician. She specializes in chemical peels and skin tightening. Let one of the staff at Blue Ridge Dermatology help you look and feel your best. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, now I want you to give your phone number again because doing classes weekly, mm -hmm. are they booked in advance? How? They are. Okay. They are, and you can tell on the website, the calendar. Uh -huh. um, the phone number again is 404 281 3551 and uh -huh. my name is Tom Powell. We can also be found on our website at surviveoutdoorsschool.com. Okay, when you started this, did you think this was going to fly or do you think people are going to go, eh? No, I, I was very hopeful that it would fly and uh, we've gotten great reception so far. Um, there, there's a real need for it. What it can become is a very enjoyable hobby. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. it's a hobby that could one day very well save your life. Sure. And at the very least, make your time spent outdoors safer and, and much more enjoyable. And can we talk a little bit about the books that you choose to read? Absolutely. There's a number of uh, books that I recommend. Uh, there's uh, Dave Canterbury has written several books, uh, Bushcraft and Advanced Bushcraft. Dave uh, is, is one of the renowned authorities on survival. Uh, a British gentleman is Ray Mears. Uh, kind of of the David Attenborough type of uh, approach to survival. Um, again, this is a Ray Mears book. And then Morris Kahansky is probably the most often referred to uh, expert. He's a Canadian gentleman that uh, actually teaches wilderness survival and bushcraft skills as a college course in Canada. Wow. And uh, all these other authors oftentimes refer to Morris Kahansky. Um, Nothing is, is really new. This is all age-old information and just different ways of categorizing uh -huh, it and then uh -huh. getting it out to the public. But uh, these books are great. There's plenty of books on the subject. Um, our school is a survival school. It's not like a prepper school. Um, there are plenty of those out there. Ours is a wilderness survival school, and these are wilderness survival books. Why do we have this books. really smooth, beautiful rock on the set? That rock is from Lake Michigan, uh -huh. and that is my very bearing. Very smooth, very that is, smooth. That is my bearing block for my bow drill set. Okay. And this, this is a friction fire starting device, all made from primitive materials. Uh -huh. The cordage on here is actually made from the yucca fiber. Uh -huh. You can see the fibers up here. Uh -huh. So I twisted this into cordage, made it into a bow. Man, you could braid hair. You could do a good job of braiding hair. I've had lots of practice. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the bow drill spindle, and this is the bow drill hearth. That block would rest on here. The downward pressure would be applied by this, and then the bow drill itself provides the spinning action and that's crazy. a friction fire starting device. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that crazy and how simple that is? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And we cover all that in the school. Everybody will get to make a bow drill. They'll get to start a fire with a bow drill. Um, it's a very, that's a very emotionally rewarding. Wood. This is a piece of maple uh -huh. um, picked up off of our farm one night, just walking around enjoying the evening and uh, whittled it. Got some yucca that evening, twisted it into the string. Got a piece of uh, poplar here. 
pop Isn't that amazing how, how really strong that is? I mean, that is... Oh, it's quite durable. It, yeah. it probably yeah. has, I would guess, 200 pound test, um, maybe more. It's almost like ski rope. Now, let me ask you about something that we, we didn't talk about. What about the Indians? Have you learned anything from the Indians? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the Indians were, you know, the, the, the native people were the predecessors that taught the settlers so much of this, and it's been handed down through generations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, recently, they found out in the desert southwest Paiute Indian traps with cordage that they had twisted hundreds of years ago. Still and there. the traps still there intact in the wow. caves. Wow. So yeah, they uh, they truly lived off the land and, and you think about it, you know, talk about the more you know, the less you carry. They they lived off the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they rode horseback or they walked and if they couldn't carry it on the horseback or on their back, they made it when they got wherever yeah. they were going. And haven't we all seen a Western where they build a fire and then they catch a rabbit or whatever and they spear it and they, you know, like a rotisserie, they sure. create their own rotisserie. Sure, yeah. sure. They were yeah. very inventive. They were quite the engineers. A lot yeah. of their traps uh, are just engineering marvels. Um, they're fascinating people and uh, we've all benefited greatly. Yeah, we owe them so much respect. We sure do. Yeah. We sure now, do. when you're in the woods, we were talking about poisonous things. Mm -hmm. um, berries who look very happy and healthy aren't. Right. And, and then some things that look yucko are really good for you. Right. Are you learning about medicinal plants as you're out in the wild? We are. And, and back to the mullein plant, mullein plant that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I had a friend in Jasper recently had a chest cold that she just could not shake. And I said, well, Sandy, I said, uh, there's a plant called a mullein plant. Uh, that I'm told if you breathe the smoke of the leaves burning, uh -huh. it's the one smoke that's actually good for you, or you can render it down into a tea. Uh -huh. And she chose to render it into a tea, drank it for uh, several days in a row, and lo and behold, her chest congestion cleared right up. Uh -huh. um, pine rosin is a great wound uh, antiseptic. You can take a little bit of pine sap, mix it with a little water, and put it on a scrape or a cut, and it has antiseptic, and of course it has a healing. A healing. Yeah. Uh, because it closes it, it basically. Closes it up, holds yeah. it shut. Yeah. Um, there's just a multitude of of, uh, of uh, medicinal value, but it's all in knowing what exactly. to use, and and that could be a week long course yeah. in getting yeah. proficient yeah. in that. Now, we want to encourage people to sign up for your class in $125. Correct. And um, I think that you should include a bowl of Brunswick stew. Well, now that you said your friend makes amazing Brunswick stew. Right oh, right oh. And that would be a, that'd be a, a great Brunswick campfire fan, meal. I love it. Yeah, that's a great campfire meal. When you go out into the wilderness, do you go for just a day or do you usually stay overnight? It's both. It's, it's, it's just whatever. The, uh, the terrain and if, if we're in national parks and we're hiking we might do multiple day hikes if I'm out hunting I might spend a week uh -huh. in the wilderness or or several nights in the wilderness it just all depends have you been to Alaska have not been to Alaska you got to go that's what I you understand got to go. you I've got been to, to go. about 50 percent of the national parks yeah. Uh, Alaska was on my to-do list in got 1972 and yeah. we, we didn't make it but we toured uh, most of the national parks in the West, and uh -huh, it was an uh -huh. experience of a lifetime, and I encourage everybody to, to do that. Have you slept under the sky in Montana? Absolutely, and See, counted, to the, me, counted that, the falling the, stars. And the sky in bet. Montana is more beautiful than the sky in Alaska. It's incredible. And Alaska sky is like, whoop, it's right. just amazing. But Montana is one of those, you know, a true survival. You know, you'd want to live there, you'd want to stay outside, sure. you'd really want to do the staycation, not Absolutely. the daycation. Absolutely. Yeah. Our goal is to live. Uh, at least part of the year in the great state of Montana. Mm -hmm. We so beautiful. absolutely love Montana. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, place. It is indeed. Well, again, give your phone number. It's a 404, so you'll know it's an Atlanta number. 404 281 3551. There you go. What brought you to Pickens County? Uh, friends of ours found a piece of property for themselves, and we told them that we were looking for a piece of property to put our two horses on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took them a little while, but they found a piece just right up the road from them, and uh, we bought it in 1999. 
built our barn in 2000 and have been enjoying it ever since. Yeah, there, there's it. something about these mountains. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have a saying, if your heart's in the mountains, your home should be too. There you go. So there, there you, you go. go. There you go. Now, you know, that's something we didn't even talk about. Next, next trip, we'll talk about this. If you're backpacking in with your animals and you are on your horse and there's an injury mm -hmm. how do you handle that because that's a whole nother thing well and that happened with some friends of ours uh they were taking a group of youngsters up to jack's creek on on a mule ride uh -huh. and uh got turned around uh -huh. and wandered around would that be somebody around. i know it was it somebody was. you know and they, they will <laughs> remain is. nameless but uh it is. They got turned around, and it got dark, and they got more turned around, wow. and then they finally, in the wee hours in the morning, decided, you know what, these mules know how to get us home, uh -huh. and they laid the reins over the mules' necks, and the mules took them home. What about that? So another good... Good Isn't safe that ending. something? Yeah, 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 yeah. So being stubborn as a mule is not a bad that's thing. That's right. That's <laughs> it's right. Not a bad thing at they all. may be stubborn, but they're <laughs> super smart too. You know, it's interesting how the pioneer, the Indian, we all depended on those animals and and the animal instinct. And right. there, there you are. Now, sure. coyotes, do you see those around your property? Coyotes are getting to be a, a real menace, uh, not so much to to people, but to people's pets. Uh huh. Uh, uh -huh. They're outdoor pets. Uh, we have them in Atlanta now, and we live in Marietta and have a backyard full of coyotes here. Wow. Yipping uh, almost nightly and howling. Love the sound of the howl, but uh, they've, they've uh, ridded the neighborhood yeah. of quite a few cats. Yeah. Um, here in Jasper, they'll they'll take young calves, young fawn deer, and a group of them will take down a, a full-grown deer. Uh. So uh, yeah, I, th I hear that they are now in all 50 states. Uh -huh. Uh -huh and uh, getting to be a real problem. There's real, really no real predator for coyotes. If you were in a survival mode and you were sleeping outside, would a coyote attack a person? I don't think that they would, but what a coyote would do is come for your food. Uh -huh. So that's a great point to bring up. There's, there's a number of animals, bears. Uh -huh. We're up here in bear country. Bears, coyotes, raccoons, mice. Uh -huh. uh, they will all come to the food, whether you're there or not. Uh -huh. And so it's real important when you're camping is to is to not prepare your meal where you're going to be sleeping you want to get about 100 yards from where you're going to be sleeping yeah. and then put all your food items and in addition to your food items if you have soaps or deodorants that have an aroma to them the, smells. the bears and the, they don't know the difference between that aroma and food wow. they're attracted to that they're going to come see what it is see if it's something good to eat so you need to put all that in a bear bag and suspend it uh, in a tree and, and any of your cooking needs to be away from, uh -huh. not right in close proximity uh -huh, uh -huh, to where you'll uh -huh. be sleeping. Yeah, that's good information. Yeah, that's good information because so many people think, oh, the bears are going to be so cute. The bears are going to be so vicious too. Well, the, the, the thing to be concerned, our black bears are, are pretty gentle and, and not uh, certainly not as, as vicious as a grizzly bear. You get out in Montana uh -huh, and you encounter uh -huh. a grizzly bear, it usually doesn't have a good outcome. But with the black bears, what you want to be mindful of is the mama bear and her cubs. Uh -huh. We all know the expression mama bear. Yes. And don't yes. get between mama bear and her cubs. Evil. We it's, can become a, evil. Yes, yes, we can. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, we can. Well, thank you for being here today. Oh, and it's again, my pleasure. Every Saturday? Every Saturday? Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Get on his site, SOS. I thought it stood for mm, on the shingle, like the <laughs> Army says, but it doesn't. It is for outdoor safety. So <laughs> there you go. Get in touch with Tom and take this course. It is time for me to take a course out of here. I'm going up to the mountains, preview 13 acres of land. Hope it's beautiful. Hope I get out of there today. Um, have a great, great weekend. Enjoy your time with friends. We will be at Antioch Baptist Church on Sunday night. Going to have a great singing there. The Bridgemans will be singing and they have a wonderful group coming in too and it's a surprise. No, it's not a surprise. Go to their webpage and you'll see that and uh, we will be there. Hope you'll be there too. Please enjoy your day and, and do something special with somebody you love. We'll see you again soon. Back the